Yo, what is going on, fam? Get the music turned on. It's smidgen. It's just smidgen, all right? That's too loud. Let me know in chat. Welcome in, everybody, guys. It's drop day. It's a big day today. We got a lot of stuff. We got we got Ultraman, man. We got the 2D drop going on. We got the Gundam that fell down. There we go. We good now. We good. All right, guys. So let's just hop into it, man. Um, hope you guys are doing good. Yesterday was crazy. The licensing international um, Jeffries uh, NFT summit, guys. It, there was a lot to break down. It appears, it appears that it might have gotten CZ's attention, which is very interesting. I could be wrong, but we'll go ahead and we'll just dive right in. Have a look at, 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 at the tweet, okay? There's a lot of cool stuff going on in the Twitter world as well, guys. I mean, lots of, uh, lots of stuff to cover. And it is drop day, guys. It's going to be big. It's going to be huge. The newbies are going to be in full swing as well, and I spilled coffee on my on my lap. Great, so we're we're in for a bumpy one, guys. I guess that that that's like ominous a little bit, like. But this coffee is still in my cup all the way, so we're good to go. All right, little turbulence, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get to our destination. Okay. All right, so let's just hop right in, guys. Yo, Freda says, hi, bro. Hey, bro, what's going on, man? All right, so let's just go back here. We're going to go up back to the old profile. And uh, Crypto Chimp here, thanks for tagging me, by the way, noticed that CZ said, after listening, let me pull up the actual, let me, let's see if I can pull this up. Look at this. Anybody, so you can only reply if he, if he follows you or mention in his reply. So he doesn't even want any speculation going on, guys. But anyways, he said, after listening to a couple different teams, okay, a couple different teams was that in Licensing International in Jeffries, right? After listening to a couple different teams presenting NFTs today, now, um, which, you know, they did present their certain NFT, their like their niche, right? I realized I didn't I didn't realize I realized I didn't realize how big the NFT market will truly be. Dang. Not financial advice. And they could be wrong. <laughs> Obviously he's like, I'm not taking a fall for this if this thing blows up. Which he's making profit from it, which is pretty funny. But guys, like this okay, so this was tweeted at 118. Um, this was the after the after Actually, let me see if I can look up the time because I thought it showed at 2 yesterday. So well, let's go ahead and pull it up just to firm Yeah, I was definitely after David had presented right um, And I'm not sure what time zone this guy's on. I mean, I guess it's tied to my time zone So it was after David Actually, no, it, this was after, okay, yeah, 18. So David, David was speaking right around the same time, okay? So these guys were still mid-pitching, right? That's very interesting, man. Could it be that just hurry up and got this tweet out because he's like, yo, if people are people are doing what I'm doing right now on, on YouTube, right? It's like, I better tweet this out because if I do it like right after, they're going to know I was watching the Jeffries Interna Licensing International event. I don't know, guys. What do you guys think, man? Was it truly 118? I don't know. Like, maybe it was some other teams that pitched him. I don't know, guys. That's pretty nuts, man. If this is, like, legit... Well, I mean, it is legit because it's obviously CZ's account. But, which is cool... We had the, uh... You know, CV collectible like the status. You know, we're trying to get the name out there. You know, appreciate that, by the way. Also, some screenshots from yesterday, yesterday's event. We have Sony. By the way, Dan, you did a great job presenting. 
and David. David, you guys, David and Dan were just epic, right? We're going to break that down, though, in just a minute. Thanks, Tommy, for uh, for the comment. Appreciate you. So upgrade and customize. So that's obviously confirmed now. I mean, we had confirmations. Um, well, we had Dan already saying that we are, we already knew like a lot of this stuff, right? Yo, what's up, Matt? What's up, Dylan? Puzzle Master. We have Jamie. What's going on, guys? Hope you guys are doing good this morning. Fill your cups up full of coffee because you're gonna need it, guys. You're gonna want to buckle in, strap in because we we got a lot to cover. All right, so you can upgrade and customize your NFT, all right? So we, we, we already knew this from previous videos, but now this is like actual real confirmation. That's pretty cool. I mean, we've already known about it for a while, but that's cool, you know, to see this uh, little extra, you know, these features and stuff like that. Share and interact with it, static or animated, view in AR or VR. Uh, we are in the rest, of course. We already know all the other stuff. Um, we have the Marvel little image right here. Can't really see what it is. You know, it is like this a little blurry, but we can kind of extrapolate that that is the Marvel logo, which is interesting. All right, NFL PA, we know that's coming. By the way, that's probably LaShawn McCoy, if I had to guess. If I had to guess down here, you maybe have a, a Cam Newton, I don't know, maybe a Megatron. I mean, of course, you have the Ultraman. Kind of, it'd be funny if this was Megatron from Detroit, but it looks more like Carolina Panthers to me, and it looks like more like a Cam Newton. Cam Newton's a big dude, and yeah. uh, anyways, and this guy, I don't know if that's Todd Gurley. I think that's Todd Gurley. And this is without me doing zero research. I just know my football players, right? Um. I know my I know my football man. Football's my my American football is my is my sport, guys. Like you you guys in Europe and and in uh, Germany, a lot of people tune in from Germany. Uh, soccer is y'all sport. Football is America's sport for now. Okay, for now, it's growing. It's growing here in the states too. It's not a big deal. All right. Um, but this is what he said, man. He said, after listening to a couple different teens presenting NFTs today, I realized I didn't I realized I didn't realize how big the NFT market will truly be. Darn. Not financial advice, they could be wrong. Very interesting, right? Handball game strong, baby. I love some hand oh handball. <laughs> Collins again with the handball, uh the handball comment. That's funny. Home fam, fantasy football league this year. That'd be dope. Where did he said Ecomi? Bro, sit back, relax, drink some coffee because why would he say actually Ecomi right here? And any project, look, look at this right here. He says nobody can 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 reply here. Now why would he do that? Okay, what now? Why would he turn this off and then but then uh, and then mention a project up here, right? So an educated guess. You gotta be, you gotta take take a step back, and he wouldn't say that without them actually being listed on the platform. All right, that would be just silly. Okay, he would not mention projects that may be getting listed on his platform. Uh, that's just not good business. It, it, without his probably not even in his own terms of service. Like they don't list that. that like you know. All right, I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna calm down. All right, I'm gonna calm down. Keep me calm. Keep me calm. Likes, man. I appreciate you, though. FOMO. FOMO. Well, no, it, it, you know, these platforms, I, you know, I've been around the crypto for a long time, and there's a very strict process to getting listed on a, an exchange. You have to fill out, like, the, the project has to actually fill out an application and pay money uh, to, e even for that application, and they can be denied. So if the exchange is like, yo, you have to go back and fix this, or yo, you got to go back and do X, Y, Z before we can even list you. Then they have to go back, do the thing, and then they have to reapply again, which some exchanges like a Binance, I would imagine, is several thousands of dollars um, 
to fill out an application. But have you seen Bake Swap? I have not. Pumping since Binance wrote a blog and said NFT market coming. Uh, I think I've heard about it. What kind of market cap does Omi be for Binance to take them serious? Um, well, they're in the top 100. So I think I've seen them list way further coins down the list than top 100. Um, I think they need a few more exchanges. I don't think they're gonna like, I know the other people are speculating. Well, that's why probably, right? Binance chain, bacon on there. Um, wanted to buy, but yeah. Okay, so I don't know what it, it will take to be honest. Um, I think it's obviously a serious project, serious contender. I think there's like extensive vetting that goes be, uh, goes on behind the scenes. So um, I think it's just like from the security standpoint of the actual like chain, like making sure like the security is really like, I, I don't know the checklist, right? I don't, I, I haven't applied to be on Binance, so I couldn't tell you, um, but I do know it's um, kind of an in-depth process. The big news still not out. <laughs> Got allergies guys, sorry. Uh, okay, so I mean the big news man was uh, was the Sony thing, right? I mean that was like we didn't really know like this was never on their list it says brand partners Sony boom Which your boy called back way back wherever wherever how far back Your boy when nobody when nobody was commenting about it man nobody it was like day one right my boy uh Mike, Mike, uh, Mike, can't remember, I'll find it, Mike Dutt, he tweeted about it, his, his tweet went viral, appreciate you for tagging me, my friend, um, that, that, uh, Vivi followed, and Ikomi, I mean, or no, Vivi followed Sony, um, let me go, no, it's actually tweets. All right, we're almost there. Almost there, almost there, almost there. Right there, okay, right there, right there. All right, so back on April 7th, I said Sony big announcement, question mark. Sony equals Spider-Man and a slew of other characters like Venom. Uh, obviously, I know Spider-Man's going through some troubles right now, but he peeked his head out through his little spidey hole and then went back into his spider little cave, right? So we can kind of extrapolate that. Look, look at this, guys, and, and this is why, okay? You heard the Zack dude on the breakdown. We're going to break it down in just a minute. Okay, so Ghostbusters is a Sony brand. Exactly, exactly. So look at this, guys. Sony Pictures, um, you know, they followed, obviously, VB. But then um, on this thread here, here's all the characters from the Spider-Verse, pretty much. 20, like, you know, well-known names. If you're, you know, you're into... If you know your characters from the Spider-Verse, excuse me. Then you'll know these characters. Morbius is coming out, which is a Sony title, but it's in association with Marvel, okay? Um, that's another Marvel connection right there. I mean, we probably won't see Morbius, like, I, I don't think. But if we did, that would be cool. On Vivi. But, like, do you guys see the connection, though? Look at these movies. Like, do you see these big-name movies? And how, like... At least Ghostbusters, like you can extrapolate Ghostbusters is on Vivi, but they have a movie coming out right around the corner. Like, you think that's a coincidence? You think it's a coincidence that Vivi is um, sandbagging Slimer? Okay, let's make educated guesses here. All right, let's extrapolate a little bit. Okay, let's do our research and our homework. All right, guys, we're not just uh, throwing out stuff. You know what I'm saying? We're not just throwing out that made up stuff you got to take everything with a grain of salt for sure you have to consume and spit out the sticks right and just you know even with me you know even with my stuff don't take my word for you know for whatever do your own research right but let's make educated guesses guys because you know, at the end of the day like some of this stuff could be correct we're on the we're on the path okay if you look at gary v i called that dude talking about ecomi he did like twice actually three times twice on Twitter and then one time by accident on his podcast and then then I called out Logan Paul and I was like it's just gonna be a matter of time before those two mention 
uh, Omi, and they did, right? So, guys, Sony. It just makes sense, guys. Look at all these movies. We did a whole breakdown before of all the Sony movies that are coming out. Um, so, there's that. Of course, you have Universal Studios, which we do need to do an entire breakdown of that. Um, I covered that a little bit already, and I think my boy Boise or somebody uh, also covered it a little bit. But Thompson, what's up, brother? Venom NFT would be... Oh, right? Right? And I think they have the full ownership of Venom, if, I, if I'm if i not mistaken. Is that right? That do you know? I know more about Spider-Man and how like that rights was wonky. And... Uh, they're, they might have to collab a little bit with Marvel. I'm not sure how that's going to work. Cause, or Marvel is just going to go in direct list, right? If we know, if so, if we know Spider Man gets on the VB app, we kind of know, okay, Disney is behind this or at some level of a subsidiary of Disney. Um, Marvel's on the platform, right? So if that, be, if that be the case, then we could see Avengers, right? The full Avengers squad. They come out and play would be epic um no pun intended by the way all right so let's go ahead go over to the channel Dang, did they take down uh, screenshots, I wonder? They might have did, they, they, it looks like they might have undid the, re, the, the retweet. It's, it had this, uh... So they retweeted this yesterday. That's why this got so much engagement. And they undid the retweet. Because I think it had this little arrow drawing to this right here. And people were going nuts. Anyways, that's something to take note of. Very interesting. Okay. All right. What were we talking about? Okay, yesterday's event. Let me, let me turn the music off. Get that out of the way. ...that are from a licensing background, consumer product... ...and... ...around and... ...were NF... Man, it's you, baby! Alright, sorry, sorry, um... Uh, sorry about... ...talking and... ...we're gonna mute. But like... <laughs> my face is over my face. That's kind of and if they weave in, into our conversation, we will definitely do so. Um, I also want to point out that this is really a global conversation. Uh, we have folks, uh, we have somebody here in the States uh, along with me. We have somebody in Singapore. We have somebody uh, down in New Zealand. Um, so we are wrapping the world with NFTs this afternoon. Um, let's get to this conversation about the but says, I would love X-Men Storm NFT with clouds and lightning. Oh, that would be so sick with, like, just her eyes, like, flashing. That would be so sick. Heck yeah, just, just F. McKenna, what's up, man? Yeah, but I haven't seen VV NFT. Yo, McKenna, what's going on, man? Men in Black is Sony. Ooh, Men in Black? That would be so fun, dude. I, mm, Men in Black, Black was one of my favorite movies growing up, man. I've literally seen that movie like a hundred, maybe over a hundred times, literally. I'm not even kidding. Uh, Will Smith in that movie and, and Agent K, man. Ooh, yeah, I love Men in Black. I am Logan Boy. I'm a Logan Boy. Oh, like you like uh, Logan Paul? That's dope. Um... I don't watch a lot. I don't actually don't watch a ton of his stuff. I'm just, I just make these educated, like, you know, it, it, it just makes sense, right? It just makes sense for those two to mention it because they're big into NFTs, right? Um, they are smart. Like, you know, a lot of people 
don't give enough credit to at least Logan on the on the education skills, right? But he just challenged Floyd to a fight off topic. But let's get back. The NFT marketplace started by helping to define exactly what we're talking about when we're talking about a marketplace. What are they? Um, how do they operate? Um, are they like a retailer? Are they like eBay? Are they like an auction house? And we heard some people in some auction houses doing this. Um, for this part of the conversation, let's focus on the initial sale when we talk <laughs> about marketplaces. We'll handle the secondary. Uh, Zach, do you want to get us started a little bit and talk to us a little bit about what we mean by these marketplaces? Sure. So there are all sorts of different marketplaces today where NFTs live and, and transact. Uh, we touch on some of these secondary marketplaces, which are open, but they also act as primary marketplaces sometimes too. So you have OpenSea, uh, which is almost like the eBay uh, of, of NFTs, where any NFT can come in and sell, and you could have you know uh, XYZ brand versus next to a digital piece of toilet paper, if you will. Everything's there. It's a mishmash. Every, you know anything can exist there. Then you have other types of marketplaces like a, like a Rarible or a marketplace like Nifty Gateway, which is a closed environment. Someone on a Nifty Gateway, for example, someone can do a drop via Nifty Gateway. That asset will live on Nifty Gateway. And then eventually it can leave, but you can't send an asset into there. Um, so there are different places where primary sales are happening. At Recur, for example, when we were building our solutions for the largest global brands, we actually have our own marketplace on the site for the brand itself. So that brand can have an isolated experience. They don't need to be mixed with other folks. Uh, and that was where the primary sale happens. There's also a secondary market on our sites th themselves for these brands, but then the assets can leave and then go and you know, trade on one of these open marketplaces as well too. Uh, and then where this is going in the future is we'll also see some of these NFTs and assets go and transact in different metaverses or games. And the nature of Ooh, NFTs BB are very baby. open, and the nature of cryptocurrency is that it's open and that things can travel. Yo, what's up, uh, VV Agent 23? Good morning, good morning, man. I'm excited for the giveaway, man. We got coming up May 1st. Excited. Uh, the toilet paper reference sounded like a subtle jab. Uh, I don't know if I heard that. I will around and it's, you know, it's, it's really remarkable that, you know, all these transactions, both primary and secondary, uh, can happen, you know, in various different locations. So, yeah, he's just like, so, you know, shout out to you guys for noticing, like, the passive-aggressive, like, jabs at VV, because I didn't really, like, I guess I was just moderating everything, trying to, like, the stream and stuff, but to not really notice it, but it just seemed, yeah, it does seem passive-aggressive, like, he is, like, hey, I'm over here creating this thing that, like, could be better than VV, you know, like, you know, because we're going to be able to hopefully be able to be interoperable everywhere. Um, but that I don't think that's the case. Like, you know, I, I get his vision, his goal, and maybe they're building some kind of protocol for that. Uh, and that will be seamless, maybe. But like, I know, like, these platform, it just takes a little bit more. Like, there's no guarantee that this guy will be able to get on, like, open seas or whatever. As a matter of fact, like, I pull up an article from 2018 that we, you know, that's been kind of floating around again, once again uh somewhere in the discord well I'll, I'll play this and keep going zach kicked it off really interesting because he by the way so the guy gary ma is the epic guy okay that think of gaming like nft gaming so that's him by the way zach is the recur guy okay so kind of what vv has already done so vv has like already done a bunch of this stuff is is like a tw a little bit of a twist to VV, right? Um, called Recur, which is definitely, in my opinion, is not a good brandable. It's a good brandable name if you're building a back end system, right? Then it's like, oh, okay, you're you're like the the Stripe or PayPal of you know, you're like the payment processor. That's what I kind of think. But when I think of VV, I think of like a Facebook or a Twitter or a social media like just hub of everything. And just a dominating force okay so that's what i think when i think of vivi i think of it it's like a whole one-stop shop for everything that you need um and i imagine eventually they're going to get that way themselves so they'll, they'll launch they've already had their uh, marketplace why not add the exchange piece to it okay why not bring nft brands why not bring nfts to vivi and just say forget about the other stuff and dan's already talked about it and david and all of them like they've already talked about um you know you, you we will be able to take it off platform but you just won't be able to do the cool stuff well what if they do it in such a way when you bring outside nfts you can do special things even within the vv app so 
BB might be adaptable, okay? So we don't know, man. The sky's the limit with this thing. He talked about the open and closed. And David, you, you, the Comey world is a little of the closed gated community that Dave and that Zach spoke about, correct? Yeah. So we we took the approach because we've been around since 2017. And back in 2017, I mean, this NFT, you know, many of you probably uh, know it wasn't a known word. A lot of people can't even spell NFT. So when we approach the license source at the beginning, they all very scared if this asset live outside the app. So right now we're a bit of more like a wall garden. Uh, everything's still minted on the blockchain, still have the ID. And, you know, we've got some of the license source, obviously with all the news happening now, they want to explore how, you know, these assets can be sent out. And, but one of the major thing about what we do, uh, look, that's quite different than the other platforms or marketplace is that we focus on experience. So uh, a big part of the experience is the augmented reality and the sh showroom, the social sharing, and that asset really, digital asset really only can be u utilized on our platform to share that. So we also think you know, there, there will be multiple different type of platforms like Zach have covered. Some of them are very primary focus. We are very focused on premium brands. We have over a hundred brands have signed up. And I think we have another 12 major company with their IP to be on board in, uh, in the next quarter. So we very focus on premium and uh, similar to Nifty Gateway, we, we choose who we work with and we deliver a whole curation for their program. And Thank Bill, you. Uh, yeah. Can I in real quick to feed off what David was saying, because I think it's a really interesting point. And I recognize David was, you know, talking to some of the licensors all the way back in 2017 when NFTs were just getting started. And, you know, when I started professionally in crypto, crypto building the trading desk and what liquidity even looked like five. <laughs> so it's kind of like they're trading blow or like he's trying to trade blows with David. David was like, Hey, uh, I'm just answering this question, you know, and we've had experience from being around since 2017, the beginning of kind of the NFT, like even talk in and realization of it. And then Zach's like, yo, like I was at a trading desk, you know, building a trading desk in 20, what liquidity and kind of, it just seems like he's trying to flex a little bit here. <clears throat> maybe he's just trying to get eyeballs onto his project a little bit. And maybe that's his strategy on this panel. Um, I think David's pay, uh, in, in, in my thoughts, and Gary did a good job as well. I, I know he had a little bit of time, and I as after the second time I watched it, <clears throat> I thought Derek, Gary did actually a, a very good job. Um, I actually like his platform, and uh, yes, he he's definitely got a little useful responses. Or actually, he did a quite educated. I, I I do like Gary. I mean his responses. And he was just answering questions as well. And it was almost like he was kind of like sitting back and waiting for it to come. So I appreciate that about Gary. Um, I know we wanted David to talk to like 100% of the time, but, you know, Zach was just kind of soaking it in. But going into the event, guys, I really thought it was going to be more of like an educational type th deal. And then that David or Dan might um, ha like give us a little bit of extra. And, and, and they did, right? They did. Um, we found out a couple extra gold nuggets, little gold nuggets in there. Five years ago, it also was a tremendously different landscape. And what I'm seeing when I'm talking to some of the largest global brands and the biggest studios in the world is they're recognizing that NFTs are going to have a utility, right? Today, of course, there's an experience that they're having on their own platform. And like at Recur and at VV, we're providing them that their own siloed experience. But we also want to make sure that when you're selling a product to a fan, they could take that asset with them somewhere. So that's why when Recur, you know, we're lucky enough that we started building our tech stack this year. So we didn't have some of the, you know, difficulties that some of the other folks faced back in the day. Like Dapper in 2017 nearly broke Ethereum. That's why they had to build the flow network. Today, there are many other layer one solutions and there's all, all other forms of layer twos coming to make things more efficient. Um, but we have the benefit of saying, hey, we can be chain agnostic. We, of course, can create a, you know, a unique siloed experience for these brands. But we can also make sure that the asset that fans are going to buy and want to interact with they can take with them and, and show a friend or bring to a game or participate in this future network that crypto is enabling. Uh, and to us, that's really exciting. And just to the brands, which is almost shocking to me initially, because I come from the crypto and technology world. Uh, my entire tech team came to come from that world. And for us to see a lot of these large global studios and these large brands to say, no, it's okay. We want our, our fans. 
and like i get he's like hyping himself up but david's like yo i'm an actual like collector and you know alfred khan <laughs> uh you know like a billion per month you know type of guy for like seven years and then of course dan has experience with uh the tech side of it and interact we want these assets to live on and go to different places has been really cool to see so i just wanted to touch on that that as this industry is evolving, we're seeing this openness come together. And that's what crypto and, and some of these things are really all about and engaging with the fans, the back to own, owning it, right? Digital ownership. So it's pretty cool how things have changed. Gary, Gary you kind of sit between these guys because you're in the B2B and you've been doing a lot of work over the uh, few several years in the gaming, which we've touched on. You both people touched on. Tell me a little bit of what you see from I think to that. We just want to hear what David, you. Who, who pushed who, who developed that right so i mean he's on our team so you know we're uh heavily experienced in the nft space um since the beginning as well so he just kind of like veers towards like hey we're experienced too maybe maybe a little flexing from gary but that's natural um uh, yo uh, muhammad thank you for the sub billy thank you for the sub bro appreciate you guys um yeah so gary I had a pretty educated response, did a little flexing, not too much. Just like, hey, we're here too. Um, this is what our business model looks like. And, you know, I think we're here to stay too is basically what he's saying. Uh, I, I do think they both felt a little threatened by David just because, you know, he's got a, 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 De a DeLorean back there. <laughs> and, and and he's dropping like million dollar drops like every week, you know, so... Uh, I I do think, and then he's got they they've got royalties. Obviously, Comey does royalties. Um, I don't know the specifics on that. So, um, so I know some of you guys were asking. Uh, it's quarterly, I think, is like what that. it was. So and then metaverse, like talk about giant oasis. We talk about giant oasis. You know, uh, they I think they do actually Ready Player One because I did a breakdown video on that, and I just saw like maybe that's one of their games or something. I don't know. Pecking order was on full display. Exactly, Comey team never pecked back unless they were actually challenged since a lot of saying their piece and laying back a lot yeah exactly like you come me that you know david and dan were just like here's our stuff y'all you know like it speaks for itself right like let our our results speak for themselves like literally i thought that was cool lies owner and real experience but that's what it is man uh in, in marketing it's called throwing rocks at your competition so when you're the smaller guy down here you want to throw rocks at your competition, um, which is not a bad strategy at all. Like Zach was definitely doing that. Gary did it kind of a little bit, just a little flexing, not too much though. Um, I did appreciate like his, you know, what he had to say a little bit. Um, so that's what kind of Zach seemed to do, be doing is throwing rocks. Like you're trying to throw rocks at the giant, like Dave versus Goliath. Um, so I, that's why, you know, it, it, to me, it, it was really clear that Ecomi was the, the giant. So at Epic, we take a look at what is, what our NFT um, is that. It's important to understand that our item, the root, you can put that in a digital space, but it's infinitely scalable. You don't have production. You don't have many, you know, distribution, transfer realms. Beyond these people, and they're going to have a home for people. And at Epic, we're building all of these rails into all these digital platforms really want to dive in when we talked a little bit about the open versus closed marketplaces like, <laughs> really want to dive into there, like, and chill, like we have OG. a lot of brand owners that are that are part of this uh this conference today um and the questions i have and from my old days of being a licensor is what are these advantages what is the advantage of an open versus a closed for a consumer and more importantly brand owner david you want to talk a little bit about this you've been working with brand owners so this is a very important question, right? He's talking about like, w like what's the advantage of having more of a closed system uh, versus open system? And this is very, you know, uh, uh, here's how David responds. For a number of years in this space, where do you see the advantages for an open and a closed as it relates to both the consumer and the uh, brand owner? Yeah, uh, obviously. <clears throat> the industry is still very new, as we all talked about. I mean, it's only really blown up the last 18 weeks or 19 weeks. And so we're, we're the very, very beginning of something quite big. And, you know, digital ownership, eventually, when you talk about, you know, ownership, people do want to own it. People do want to take it out, the ecosystem, because they, they think they purchased something and their ownership really belongs to the consumer. 
So we, we are starting to understand that a lot of these uh, licensors are begin and open to the idea of having this asset to be sent out. Um, and I, I, I guess moving forward, it's all about security. Uh, and for us in our platform, it's all about the user experience. Uh, what we don't really want is where right now everything's still for crypto orientated. You need to have a private key. You need to have a MetaMask wallet. You need to set up a lot of these things. And we can't have a user ring, ring us up and, and say, well, I lost my whole collection. So security is an aspect of it. Education is another big one. And as we transect throughout the period, um, and this is just very nascent in the industry, and we're, we're going to see a whole, you know, different directions of it. Um, and, you know, one of the major things we, we see big issues with licensors, it's about royalty coming out. If, if there's any on the security, which will touch base later on, it's about, you know, a, a lot of the environmental issues on the blockchain, which people talk about. So, so very like he's, he has a lot here that to talk about, right? Um, some of it is the, some of the struggles on VV. Like that's, that's like a power position, man, where maybe you talking about like a little bit of your struggles that you went through yourself. Like that's a total like open, you know, basically like he's very comfortable with talking about it. Um, that means he's very confident. So I, I appreciate David for bringing some of that stuff up. And then he's like, yo, but very important to have your, your blockchain be, you know, car, like he didn't say carbon neutral, but he just says, you know, environmentally friendly. And you look at Ethereum guys, I've been talking about Ethereum for like three years. Like when crypto kitties blew up and gas fees were literally astronomical and, you know, people were mining, like it, it's just very inefficient. Right. And I was talking about then they need to hurry up. If you go back to my videos on Cardano and a lot of my videos, I talk about like, yo, if Ethereum does not do anything, like Cardano will be like, will replace it. Like no questions asked. It will be the number three crypto. And at one point, I think Cardano was the number three crypto uh, for a second. And uh, that's just because like Ethereum is going to beat itself, right? I'm not saying Ethereum is going to die or go anywhere. I'm just saying like, it can be replaced if it doesn't choose to to do anything. And I think they need to. Obviously, Ethereum's great, guys. I, I'm not I'm not trying to down talk Ethereum. It's great, um, and there's platforms it's scalable. It, it's not going anywhere. Uh, but I'm just saying, like, they just need to hurry up, right? Okay, All right, back on track. And then the experience. What are we actually selling? Are we just digitalizing it because it's the word NFT, or there's some good utility to it? And brand owners are really just beginning to understand and you know the monetization is going to be multiple in, in many many different ways uh with, with us you know we very centric focus and experience so a lot of the brand owners really coming to us uh to get their brands in front of their audience in a different okay that's very important guys he's highlighting something super important from the beginning of what he said to right now talking about the experience guys like uh, obviously as crypto guys we know how to go down the, the meta mask we know how to do the private keys the secret key we know how to like you know we know how to download our wallets and store them safely and put them in a vault and cold store we know all this stuff right and we know how to like take our collectibles off chain if we need to we need we know how to cold store we know all these terms verbiages decentralization and all the buzzwords of crypto but you're looking you're talking about somebody who's you know older maybe possibly a boomer that really loves to collect they get on a what what if they get on one of these other platforms and they gotta they gotta download a private key or like they have to like enter in this address that like looks all funny to them that they've never seen before it's just this long string uh and how difficult that can be like or they can just download the vb app and just buy something on the spot shoot you know cool videos and like ar and do all these crazy stuff and they you know they have a piece of that ownership and they have fun with it okay they don't have to do much they just click on their iphone download it boom they got gems boom they just bought something boom they bought a, a riso whoa it's worth like fifty thousand gems now you know or five thousand whatever and boom they have five thousand gems in their account now i can go buy more stuff whatever right or you know they download this this weird app then they have to connect it and then so david's talking about the experience okay so that's a very very important um why vv why we've like ogs have been 
very bullish on it and the, it's about the experience guys if you mess it up in the very beginning you mess it up kind of forever right um they that's why they you know we were kind of mad that they closed the marketplace but at the same time as an investor you got to look at it as the experience okay we got new people coming in but you don't want them to be sour okay ogs can we can go through it okay crypto guys we can go through it we know Hopefully you guys have been a part of some beta at one at some point. Hopefully you guys have been a part of like at least Coinbase screwing up in the beginning. You know, Coinbase was crashing like literally like every other day uh, there for a while back in the day. Um, you know, literally like everyone's like freaking out like, oh my God, I can't sell my Bitcoin, can't buy it. Um, remember when Robin had big problems just recently? Uh, that's a whole different story. But look at, Coin. you know, it happened to Coinbase. Okay. So, anyways, social mana. I got to get off my soapbox a little bit. Sorry, sorry guys. I get a little, a little passionate today. Uh, and and different way. And yeah, Coinbase still has problems. Exactly. They see us as a gateway to help promote to that new categories. And this is no different than buying a physical toy, buying a mug or a t shirt. It's just that now you can buy a digital image or a digital 3D sculpture of a toy. Uh, that a license will produce. Yeah. Does the, does the guys does the experience for the owner change? Whether he he said, yeah, and then dropped the mic. That's that's what I saw. Whether it's in a closed environment or an open envi uh, marketplace. Absolutely. So Paul says, what are you speaking of? What do you recommend for long long term storage? Uh, uh, Omi storage, trust wallet, Meta, cold storage, Omi wallet. Trust wallet's good. Uh, it, you know, if you're a little bit paranoid, I would definitely go the secure wallet route. Like, Comey owns their own. Yeah, they're going through, like, some, you know, fixes, updates on the wallet. Um, but look out for that. You saw the demos where you can hover your NFT over the wallet. Um, I think that's cool. Mike is a bit muffled. A bit muffled. I think it's because I'm, like, looking. I'm, like, looking over there at, at the chat. Um Anyways, yeah, guys, that's all. So I think what really happens is. So does a ledger work for NFTs though? I, um, I, you know, I have ledger, but if you're in an environment that does not allow an asset to leave, that's like a really closed environment. And for us, we are creating these siloed experiences for a specific brands so that their, you know, X Y Z studio does not have to keep, uh, you know, their item or statue or whatever it is next to, you know, a random other item. Mm -hmm. initially on a sale as well as their own solid uh you know secondary market but if that user i'm not even sure what that means statue or xyz we are creating these siloed experiences for a specific brand so that their you know xyz studio does not have to keep so does he i, I wonder if he did, no doesn't know but you can have multiple vaults in the app so that's kind of all that's already uh that problem's already solved right within the vv app you can have multiple vaults. So if you want a Batman cave vault, you can have that in there. You can create a Spider-Man, like, you know what I'm saying? So that's already like thought out. So I don't know if he knows that, but, and I'm not sure if he was trying to shoot jabs at VV or not, but it, it is what it is. That's the worst. Yeah, so like, I, I don't know about you, but every collector I've seen so far on Twitter literally has different different things like all together in their vault like you're talking about art from different artists like everything's just kind of together right i i think that to me is more like a museum i think that i think that's okay i, I i'm actually i'd rather see every everything all in one place and be able to browse around but like okay look at this wall this is like the batman art from becky clunan or look over here this is uh marvel stuff you know i i want to see everything in one place that that's just me though i mean everybody's different bb's already solved that problem though uh you know their item or statue or whatever it is next to you know a random other item mm -hmm. initially on a sale as well as their own solid uh you know secondary market but if that user cannot take that asset to go engage with it in a different way in a you know in a metaverse like gary chatted about or in a game or in another application as this develops, then they lose a lot of the potential future utility. So there's all sorts of different things that we can talk about and, 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 and things that we are at, at Recur that we think about all the time is how do we make sure that we're continuing to accrue value back to the brand while also maintaining 
a really great experience for the fan. Because a fan doesn't want to look back in six months or two months or whatever it is and be like, wow, I just bought this NFT. It can't do anything. And I'm just staring at it. And, you know, there was some speculative bubble. No, 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 no. What we're doing at Recur, for example, is we're looking right past that and trying to think, what's the utility here? How can we make sure we're providing and accruing as much value to the brand by creating their own, you know, experience within the brand, but then the user can then take the asset, you know, wherever else. And then how else are we thinking about royalties, right? We're, of course, having the royalty on our platform. But what we're also doing is on the actual smart contract level. I don't know what NFT you would just like buy and just stare at. And, you know, <clears throat> I think every platform is like doing something special uh, you can do with your NFT. Like they have their own vaults, right? Their own um, rooms. Shots fired. Exactly. I'm like, yo, I don't know about, I don't know about you, but I know with my, with my Batmans, I can, I can take pictures, selfies with them or whatever. I can shoot them i can post it on social media i can download the pictures like i don't know we have code that is creating a recurring royalty on chain forever uh we're creating the standard on erc 721s um for what a recurring royalty will be um so we're you know we are the oh, team so it's not there yet it, it's what it will be uh, so maybe you should partner with uh ecomi man build build a backend system for that Maybe they will, man. Maybe maybe we're being too hard on Zach. I don't know. What if what if they're all kind of partnered together? I I did a video the other day. I I thought they would be. That's what I was thinking. I thought I was like, yo, they could all have some kind of connection, right? Um, that definitely didn't seem like the case. It seemed like everybody was like in their corner, like it was a cage match, and David Yu was the reigning. David and Dan were reigning champions of the world. Building that, um, and that means when these assets travel, I think he sounds mad because he come already metaverse already. already done that he's already they've already done creator or IP i'm gonna meet myself it was kind of loud so that's my guess ever, i don't know you can capture this forever i don't know and that's really really powerful and the other thing that we're thinking about at recur given our experience <laughs> and the team's experience dealing with this product as well, as well too is what's the crossover because we've talked a lot about how these assets go and have utility in the digital world but what's the crossover in the physical world so how can you have an asset that you've minted today and you're distributed and now a user takes out, but then brand can then come back and communicate with that user and then maybe tied into a, a movie premiere or uh, uh, you know access to a drop of a- It's kind of all over the place on that. Like if you sell your collectible, then they contact you about a another like movie premiere. Uh, I think he, what he's trying to say, is he's trying to, he's moving too fast. Um, he's basically trying to say like, if you sell your NFT, there's a follow-up system like an email, right? Like, how was your experience or something? I don't know. Maybe like a reconnect, you know, the, the reconnect the flame with that consumer, um, which is pretty much in marketing, that's just called like a drip campaign, you know? It's like an email campaign. Um, it's nothing fancy. Uh, like every brand does it. So maybe he's trying to say that, um, which is not hard to do. Uh, but, you know, Anyways, there's that. The movie premiere thing he's getting into. Very good idea. We talked a lot about this in the main Discord, the main VV Discord. Um, we've talked about it left and right. We, we've you know we've probably hit every nail on the head on that. Um, as we already talked about at the beginning of this stream, like we have the Ghostbusters around the corner. There, there's a bunch of like Batmans around the corner. There's a lot of movies that are just around the corner, and it's ironic that. BB is holding back Slimer, for instance. So I think this is some of the stuff that we already know. Like we've already talked about. Uh, Reese has even said some stuff like that um, and speculated himself a little bit. He's like, yeah, we could go that route. We could do this. We can't explore new ways. It's not like VB is just like, oh, I'm back here. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm tied down and I can't like adapt. And I think that's kind of silly to make that assumption. Let them make that assumption though. Let them make that assumption about VV. Like VV is still like, you know, we're underdogs, you know, whatever. Uh, I think that's fine. Of a sneaker. That's uh, uh, like that. already, so, you know, Comey's already doing all that. that. To do with engagement, by open things up, allowing things to travel and future proofing your NFTs, right? You're future proofing it by allowing things to be open and travel. We don't know how this technology will travel and, or change. And as Gary and David and, and I. Yeah, Chef says, talking about different ways to reward token holders with airdrops of movie tickets. Now that would be. No, that's a good idea. Exactly, Kyle. It's why I can't stand the guy I'm in the mansplaining to the man. For sure, for sure. Yeah, that would be dope. Um, yeah, if you hold like an NFT, like let's say you hold <clears throat> at least one set of the series one through four Batmans, 
you get like a ticket to the actual Batman movie. That would be crazy, you know. I was talking about. Then it would drive mad um, people to want to collect, right? NFTs. It's so nascent. It's so new. That's really true. We don't know what the winning chain will be. We don't know what the winning use. <laughs> we don't know what the winning chain will be. Case will be <laughs> Call me. Uh, I don't know. Maybe chain. I you know. I don't know. Chain is like different. You know. Is he talking about blockchain? Or is he talking about the actual platform? Because obviously VV is not strapped down to a, a blockchain. Uh, obviously, it's on the Go chain. But they're looking at, obviously, like energy efficient chains, right? Um, so I'm not sure what he's talking about there. But, you know, Dapper, obviously, Flow. Um, that's probably going to be one of the top chains, you know. Uh, Flow, Wax, and, you know, on the gaming side, probably Engine. We have to keep openness. And we, we do. It's e -com and uh, to a good point, you know, Ecomi could just go to the the flow chain if they wanted to. Oh man, it's Ecomi. Sure we do. Continue engage with it. Sorry, guys. As well as the uh, fan. yo, if Recur was smart, they'd yeah, yeah, partner you with Ecomi. A bunch of licensors over this time. My yesterday's it, comments. You've seen it because you were in it. In the I was all hyped up. Too. What are the questions on that they're asking, or they want guidance from you on when they're talking about how do I get into this marketplace? Yeah, that's a really important question and a very pertinent one, honestly, like you said, given the last 60 days and 90 days and, and, and David and, and Zach both kind of touched on that and what David did as well. Like, like, I mean, the conversations have definitely shifted in the last, you know, since the beginning of the year. And it's very funny. I mean, um, it's interesting. Like we've been around since, you know, 2018 um, and we've been doing, you know, in-game digital drops for, you know. A little flexing going on. Yeah, we've been around two at 2018, multi-million dollar drops, work with big brands. So he kind of flexes a little bit, but I think that's I think that's kind of a direct response in, into Zach. Uh, I I don't think that was like a uh, organic flex, like or a uh, you know like a I don't think he just originally like wanted to flex. I think he just like brought out the flex because Zach was like flexing literally like the flex. You could see the flex muscles in Zach's like forehead brand is very interesting i mean we are actually and david's you know, just chilling like industry, like an og back there agent for that entire industry. nobody knew anything we'll, we'll skip him because you know uh you know it, it is about nft what it is the blockchain uh, meant that silent strong um, type with all the headlines and it's really shifted to that and like david said the education aspect has has changed as well so i mean i'll look so he's giving a little kudos to david like he's like yo david you know you know that's probably as we shift with them over this period of time and the conversation always kind of yeah like chef said i like gary ma i think gary ma was also well spoken and poised for sure the same path right i mean we helped them strategize and think about what their products and what their brand and it seemed like his response was like genuine like he genuinely wants to connect people to his platform and can, he wants to genuinely educate them on what it means to you know game and have cool airdrops in game okay which is a cool idea. Um, it is cool. Um, I, you know, I definitely would like to look into Epic now, for instance, uh, just to see what they got going on. And um, anyways, I appreciate that. Is, and think about like what, how they want to look at this space and navigate for them in the future. Um, I mean, they have, and that's what I was expecting from this whole event. I was expecting uh, responses more like David and, and, and Gary. To lose, right? And I don't mean that in my new space. Uh, you mentioned stream is down. Wants to uh, say, we just hear an in interactive into the table. Uh, hype is early and there's still a lot to move, and you don't need to jump in. I know to what mark a certain grouping give some guidance on that. Yeah, I'm working with all the questions and to lose by thinking about it. Something if I'm looking off, I'm looking at the screen with all the questions flowing in. And, uh, some people are asking, does it matter what blockchain you are as to what marketplace you can be on? It, do the marketplaces only want to work with a specific or a certain grouping and that might limit it or there's some that will work with anybody et cetera can somebody kind of give some guidance on that yeah i, I can touch on that one so right now the most popular <laughs> blockchain i can is do that Ethereum. one there's the most developers building on it there's the most marketplaces in the nft space on top of it um so eth is is really capturing the most mind share um the reality is and this is something we've touched on is there's other some problems with it, right? It's expensive. People talk about gas fees. So I don't even know if he answered that question correctly. Um, now that I think about it, like he was talking about marketplaces, um, 
I think it was thinking about like open seas and Zach kind of went beyond that question to answer another question is what it kind of seems like to me. I, I, I mean, I could be wrong, um, but this is an article from 2018, which is a good transition. Um, Ecomi partners with OpenSea to create an open market for digital collectibles. Okay, read that again. Ecomi partners with OpenSea to create open market for digital collectibles. Okay. You can read this article. It's from 2018. Um, it talks about it quite a bit. Um, open Ecomi Collect, aka VV app, um, times OpenSea. So together, working together. OpenSea will be the first open marketplace to allow trade the trade itself of licensed collectibles provided by the Ecomi Collect platform, aka provided by VV platform. The interchangeable arrangement, interchangeable guys, interchangeable will not only allow Ecomi Digital Collectibles to reach a wider audience, but also offers another another location to trade, sell, and interact with NFTs, okay? All right. Hope that answers um, uh, Bill Burke's like question. And there are layer two solutions coming out to, to address some of these concerns. But right now, you know, a lot of the innovation is happening on top of Ethereum. But at least at Recur, we're taking the approach of, we don't want to speculate on what the winning chain is. That's not our job. You know, I was a Mighty trader Kong. for the past five years, but that's not what I'm doing now. We just want to go and help and help the brands and make sure we're helping them navigate the ecosystem. So we're taking. Yeah, this is where David has a tremendous advantage of being working with being a, like he is licensed with big brands already. Right. He has his, uh, his older brand that he's already done tremendous work with which is why Alfred Kahn's on the team. Right. He's already a collector. Like he uh, already like as an NFT uh, platform, <laughs> like it. There's tremendous knowledge in already being a collector, owning you know physical locations. Um, so David is just way ahead of the game on that. Um, we're we're all still learning about NFTs, right? We're all still like these use cases and all this stuff. Like even the experts, there's still new stuff coming out. You had the the pack, the the pack uh, cube or whatever that was released. Um, which is like a new thing, you know, so in a blockchain agnostic approach, because it could be there's a chain that, you know, is best for gaming or, or best for financial services or Engine. best for, you know, something else. And these NFTs, they also have the potential. Of course, we talk about some of the utility or Epic. as assets in, in game and this and that, and maybe they have some sort of He's value. Like, yeah. post as Epic. Uh, and that's involved in some ecosystem. So the chain really matters. You want to be able to be have your assets be interoperable. You want them to be able to live on and participate in all sorts of different ecosystems. And that's why also at Recur, we actually have the, the ability to, to do swaps. So even if we minted today on Ethereum, you can always come back to platform and we swap onto another chain. We also have a trustless swap that exists in the decentralized world. So you don't even have to interact uh, back to our platform. It, you can just perform a swap uh, and we rely on cryptographic signatures. So that, to his point, he's got uh, he does have good points there. Definitely some jabs uh, again, which is fortunate. But uh, a couple points, you know, he does have a couple points there. You know, to be honest, so um, yeah, if he is going to build some kind of protocol, then reach out to David, man, and get that get that set up because that's exactly like that piece right there is exactly probably what they're looking for. So I I wouldn't try to compete with VV by any means. For that. Um, which is really innovative and cool. Um, but we are taking the approach that, again, if you look back at what the top chains were five years ago, it is drastically different than it is today. And a lot will probably change uh, in, the, in the future too. Tomorrow. Uh, so why, so why speculate? Uh, the whole goal is try to be uh, future-proof. Yeah, anybody else? Yeah, yeah, nay on that. Like, you know, it, you know if you're into crypto, you, you know like what, what it is. Like, you don't... You know what it's going to be, uh, you know. I just want to add in on that. Yeah, um, no, I, and, I, and our, our approach is pretty much similar to Zach. Um, but we, you know, moving forward, the the industry is going to be a mass market product. Um, mm -hmm. We really believe that the user is going to come on the platform. They what what a just like solid, smooth transition to be like, hey, yeah, we get, I get what you're saying, but. Here's the masses, right? Once once again, we're going back to the masses, like the people with wallets, the people that matter, the people that collect, the people that have a ton of money. We want to go after like the, these big brands. Yeah, they're doing like little drops on open seas and stuff. Um, 
but you you're you, what you really want is these brands to feel comfortable with the experience right and david is just hitting every nail on the head when it comes to the, hitting to all, all that point you on or what chain uh my digital assets living on Mara, what they really that, want the user really want to know is is my collectible there is it safe is it transferable and you know three years ago four years ago when we start building our tech out uh one thing that works very well you know now four years later we we we'll be emerging and changing to a new chain and forever technology is going to evolve and the you know the right thing is that you know there's a lot of hybrid network where we can easily migrate to something else and allow these assets to be interruptible like zach had mentioned and yeah i mean we th there's going to be huge opportunity uh let's see that something again. else and allow these assets to be interruptible like zach had mentioned and yeah i mean we th there's going to be huge opportunities and new 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 chains coming up all the time yeah i second and third uh everything <laughs> both these guys just said um they had some really highlights and good points yeah i mean the future is going to be uh, continue to innovate and evolve and uh and i think everyone here is is, is going to good job identifying that and, and like zach said being you know chain agnostic um etc and, and building things like they said that you know like appeal to the users and what's important to them so i mean those are those are the right approaches for sure one last um so yeah man um i think he went zach went a little too hard and that uh yeah uh, should have been trying to you know go lighter and trying to appeal to david you like hey use our solution right Last question on the primary marketplace and, and again uh coming from the licensing community um where we have a lot of people joining us today what will the marketplace handle themselves from a logistics marketing sales pricing all that type of stuff and what are they going to expect from the brand owner from way support or other means do we do we have any insight of this again fast changing model changing today versus yesterday but what what can the brand owner expect yeah i mean i'd like i'd like to uh, unpack that one for yeah. a second there too yeah um i mean at this uh, stage, I think it's actually very important to have a very kind of uh, uh, white glove approach with the brands and the licensors, just at this kind of phase and stage of it. Uh, those things are actually very important to brand owners. And um, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> He's like, what, what, what? I, I really agree a lot with what Gary's saying. Uh, our, our, our approach to it is, you know. The <laughs> it, it looks like Gary is like, Oh shoot! He's got a Delorean. Model is that we want to. Uh, Let's watch that again. Uh, our 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 approach whoa, to it whoa, whoa. is, you know. Whoa! The Delorean butterfly doors. You no, know, the model is that we want to we want to help, them, right? We want to we want we, like we're the white. Obviously, he's probably like somebody offset. You know, he's like, yo, what do you want? Like, I'm streaming. Able solution for this. We want to help the brands we're working with. Our entire background on the tech side and crypto side is is transactional, right? How to deal with AML KYC in, in the crypto world how to have a smooth process like that was uh, our bread and butter from a tech perspective. So actually when a user is going to go to one of our white label solutions, they won't even know that it's crypto there. It's all going to be with credit card or fiat currency. If a user wants to use. Okay. So that's what he should have been kind of doing the whole time. Not really going for the jugular, but saying like, okay, we have white label solution. Okay. That's where that, that's what I would have liked to see from Zach and not, like, hey, let's jab the living freaking crap out of everybody here. Uh, let's try to make relationship, all right? So I, I, I really would have wish he, uh, you know, came at it with that approach. So uh, the white label mentioning that over and over and hitting that point on the head, because it just seems like he came out as a competitor to VB and not so much as a, uh, a white label solution. So anyways, that's my point it's on that. Crypto, they can, because obviously this is a crypto market. Uh, but for us, we want to make it as easy as possible for the brand owners that, you know, they don't have to deal with this because today the market is a lot different than it likely will be in the future. Um, so today they, it's very hard for them to manage things that are built on top of crypto. And what happens if a crypto transaction comes in, and they have a wallet. Well, then how do they hedge that currency risk? Right. And this is a question I asked some of the new developers that have, you know, are coming out with new companies, too. It's like now there's going to be tons of transactions. How are you thinking about liquidity and market making? 
and hedging your deltas and hedging your your exchange risk. Like, how are you, you know, how are you hedging this risk, right? So part of our hedging your options, I guess. I mean, delta is options trading systems too, beyond just dealing with transaction, AML, KYC, fraud, all these things that you know our team has done at Kraken and Circle and Poloniex and Cumberland, all these big crypto exchanges and trading firms. You know, we're also thinking about you know liquidity and 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 hedging a lot of this 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 risk and. These are things that you know, typical um, you know, developers aren't necessarily thinking of and brand owners aren't thinking of. And we don't want to complicate it even more. Crypto is complicated enough. So we're trying to really have a white glove service. And over time, uh, you know, brands will be able to deal with these things because the technology will evolve. But for now, as, as Gary said, it has to really be a white glove uh, type situation. Yeah, and sorry, I'll just respond to that. Sorry, David, give me, give me one second here. And, and we think- Whoa, whoa, Gary, Gary about that not just like this this phase and we're kind of thinking about what that means in, in the next phase as well i mean we've already um we have we built a, an entire kind of um um uh, uh um a system that helps brands basically create a self-fulfilling like marketplace where they can access and, and get into uh, creating digital merchandise in itself. So that idea of kind of the more do your stuff that we're talking about um, is being prepared for and, and, and things will kind of slide down that scale over time exactly, right? As people become more familiar and can, and the more tools are in place, uh, whether by us or other people that are providing it, then it kind of opens up that avenue. Sorry, David, over to you. Yeah, so our approach is pretty much uh, business to consumer directly <clears throat> for brain owners. Um, obviously- once again, man, once again, like he's just like, hey, we're, we're direct to consumers. That's very important. Very, very important. With crypto, back in 2017, man, every YouTube channel, every, you know, every crypto guy um, was always talking about mass adoption 24-7, just always like, Share it on social media. Share like even Coinbase. Share Coinbase, man. Share, share Coinbase. Why? Why is that? We wanted mass adoption. Okay, back then. Even now, like it's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, PayPal, PayPal. Look at Bitcoin. They they're adding Bitcoin. Uh, Apple Pay. Oh my God, look at Apple Pay. Uh, BitPay. Oh my gosh, Bit BitPay. You can add BitPay to to your Apple phone now. We're still like giddy about it, right? Why? Why is that? It's because you need the mass, the masses to adopt it okay that's it that's it otherwise you have no business okay very important like if you go to shark tank with uh the big dogs right you're, you're you know the fubu guy uh and i know all their names i just like i'm on the spot right now so i forget it even mark cuban I almost forgot his name uh mr wonderful kevin uh uh can't believe like i always know uh i i always know the fubu guy and for some reason it can't Barbara, what's the Fubu guy's name? I I have his like book, but anyways, like you can't just go to Shark Tank and be like um, Tesla buying Bitcoin exactly. Like you can't just go to the Shark Tank and be all these investors and just be like, yo, I got this product, but I can only market it to uh, to Joe back here who's a, a developer, and but you know I got Bill back here who is works construction and has no idea about crypto. And, but I'm expecting them to buy my NFT. Like, that's not a business model. And so I think it's super important that what David did is just we hit it on the head every three, four years every ago, time. Most every brains hit. doesn't boom, know boom, how boom. to do blockchain, how to mint this. Uh, we got studio, we got contractors designing the AI experience, the digital models, and the secondary market. So we we are very end to end. So basically. We help brands um, and we, we like to see us as one of the premium platforms where all the brands come on and we help navigate through the marketing, the minting, the issuance. We give the advice what the primary retail price is and the mintage of how many we do. Um, we know, you know, in the marketplace, what we're going for is a very much, a pretty much a, a huge mass market. We don't focus on just let's get the highest price, 65 or $69 million for a piece of artwork. What we do is we <laughs> allow brands to they go out laugh. and market, you know, the DeLorean, we did 87,500 of these DeLoreans sold in three hours. Um, and John DeLorean, he only made 9,200 of this car. So it gives you an example how large and the scale of the market it is today. And, 
um, we really help the brands connect to the consumer directly and take the hassle out of everything they need to know. Cool. This is a good transition from the primary market to the secondary market. Um, what are some of the things, you know, the questions I see popping up are, you know, does the seller need to think about the uh, blockchain platform? Do they have to sell on the same place they bought? Uh, do they have to worry about blockchain that's tied into is where they're selling? Um, or can they sell anywhere? Can somebody kind of give us a, a, a quick dive or a quick overview of the secondary market today? Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll dive into this. Good, Zach. Uh, secondary markets are, are different everywhere. Um, so there are certain assets that can't leave the platform that they're minted on in the primary market. So those can only transact on one platform. There are other assets like, like assets that are minted via recurring and are branded experiences that, that can leave. And those can go and participate in open marketplaces on various different blockchains, whichever the user wanted to take that asset onto, they, they can go and participate. Um, and so there are certain marketplaces that don't allow for, but you know, It'd be crazy if Zach literally was trying to pitch to Ecomi the whole time and we were all just like so pissed off at Zach just for being that way. Um, <laughs> but he's really just trying to pitch directly to David the, the entire time. Uh, that would be uh, actually pretty like a, a twist, a twist in events that we'd be like, oh, oops. You know, an asset to come into it, right? So beyond just certain marketplace not allowing for assets to leave, Certain marketplaces say you, you can't come in. Here, here, here um, you go. So this is what I'm going to do with Zach that talks. Also depends on, on <laughs> I was being super well too. aggressive too on that, my stream. Hey, or, all right, guys. Hundreds of thousands of, of, of anybody can do it. What happens in the secondary? How do you think about liquidity, right? How do you think about you think having large depth of market? How do you have mm. a great uh, matching engine and, and, and things like that? Because these are all things that come from the trading world. So, for the first time ever, instead of selling a t shirt on eBay, right? And you're taking new types of trading into into into, into these into these markets, and you find me a Twitter right now. Let's look it up. In a, in Let's get way. it. So what we do is we lean a lot of on our our experience being market makers and, and thinking about liquidity markets and accessing liquidity all throughout crypto, and think about how that industry has evolved, and we apply that to our secondary markets on our own platform. Uh, and as we view other other platforms, that's kind of how we think about where all these assets will perform best. Is where is the deepest liquidity? Right? Where is the you know the most participation, and how can you help uh, provide some of that liquidity too? So these are things that we're thinking about a lot. So, what controls would a brand owner have in the secondary market? Are there any uh, that they can control? Uh, how does this? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Chef says where Zach is talking about is but the PDF video platform. Oops, why did it delete? Oh, I guess it automatically. But he said. Uh, the secondary market is right there. The liquidity is right there. Exactly. Bring all the collectors together in a massive market. 24-7 comment. Comic Con trading convention was genius. Exactly. Sorry, sorry, Chef. The bot is just going crazy. You know, this ownership go, which could live forever. How yeah, Zach proved uh, more so on, like, the marketplace with Vivi is... Oh, dude. Uh, essentially, it's already active. We're already seeing, like, a million dollars of uh, trading volume or... Quote unquote, right? It's like buying and selling, essentially. The brand owners stay connected. Well, a lot of this actually can be programmatically um, put into smart contracts, Bill. So, I mean, it's the old proverbial, um, you know, the analogy with smart contracts is kind of like the, the vending machine, right? You put something into it, and based on what it's programmed to do, it spits something out. Like that was like kind of like the first examples of what smart contracts were like years and years ago. So, I'll lean on that. But yeah, I mean, you can basically um, encapsulate these rules um, along with it. So if it needs to redistribute these royalty payment systems, uh, of royalty distributions and so forth, it can. Um, and, 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 and those are some of the things that we address as well within our, and we have a, a, an entire block. But maybe Zach, like, maybe we're, maybe he's just trying to pitch, like, maybe he's so aggressive because he wants to stand out so much to David and Gary, even Gary, like, uh, as far as, like, the royalty, maybe the white label, you know what I'm saying? We decentralize our chain. Everything can be programmed, et cetera. But yeah, it's it's a programmatic thing that we're going to see evolve into that to handle that. So. Yeah, and that's the whole beauty of, of, of crypto is that everything's on chain. Everything can be programmatic. Everything can be in the smart contract. Decentralized. Uh, and that's what we're doing with how we're handling our royalties too. Recurring I'm just playing, guys. The These guys are probably really smart. More.
I don't know why I said that. A dumb comment. Successful in the future. Then me for sure. Owner can can participate and and still see it. Um and, and yeah exactly. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hence, hence, hence the name. Hence the name, right, Zach? Recur. Hence the, hence the hence name. name. Recur, recur. Recur. Yeah. Exactly. So, so the big question is, is that who is responsible for paying? By the way, forty-two minutes left on a DeLorean Ultra Rare, for um, and my Corsica. My Corsica is at two hundred fifteen gems right now. Serial number seventeen ten, right now on the marketplace. Quick update. Quick update. Guys, you can pick that up right now in the marketplace for 215 gems with only 42 minutes if you don't get outbid, of course. So it is a cheap Corsica. I can get that on screen. It's really blurry. And then, of course, DeLorean 7414 has about 42 minutes with only one bid. For 275 gems. So if you guys want to pick those up on the market, you know where to find them. Speaking of which, liquidity, baby. Back to the stream. Paying those royalties. Is it blockchain where it's tied to? Is it the marketplace? Where does how does that money that was I just want to hear David? The, I just want to hear David and the buyer get back to the brand owner. Police. Well, it's all programmatic what's happening in the secondary market if it's done on the smart contract level. So what happens is the total notional value traded. So let's say something sells for a hundred dollars. Yep. And in the smart contract, you say there's going to be a 10% royalty to the original IP owner, then ten dollars automatically in that currency, right? So let's say it was ETH that it transacted, would go to a <laughs> wallet, uh, and then that would be you know dispersed to to the brand owner. How we handle that recurs, we manage the entire blockchain experience, everything's happening. Yeah, they're, happening they're probably just all intimidated by the uh, DeLorean the background. Uh, to the license, to the large studios that, that we're working with. Um, yeah. But again, all that's happening on chain. It's the whole magic of, of, of blockchain is that we can document it. So yes. a, a quick question that came in, this is kind of, you were just talking about wallet and everything is a perfect timing one. A licensor is sitting going, I don't want, I, I don't want a cryptocurrency. I want my cash. How does it go from the cryptocurrency? Who's being responsible for that exchange to get the money back to the brand owner? In some cases, who needs to disperse it to producers and artists and, and everything else? Absolutely. So, yeah. what, oh, sorry. Yeah, so we're, we're, with what we do is, um, yeah, for the love of God, put, like, please let David answer much think about mass market once again bill um our, our approach on the secondary market is number one we have over thirty thousand listing on our secondary market and currently it's transacting between two hundred thousand to quarter million dollars a day uh, right now the platform um, doesn't collect royalties for the license source uh, we can we have the function and in, in, in this case we will be responsible to be paying it out on behalf uh, basically on quarterly or monthly basis. A um, couple, couple other things that we do need to think about um, is that, and we have seen transactions uh, uh, being peer-to-peer -peer trading, for example. You know, if I, what, what we really see the big market for where we are, if you go to a Comic-Con, you go to an event, uh, you have your phone out, you want to swap something with someone, you can try it. So it doesn't always involve in a secondary market with money transaction. Um, and we have started to see things being sold on eBay. You know, pay, people take a screenshot of the digital collectible they bought. Um, they take a screenshot, they transact on eBay to bypass it. Um, you, you can't capture the whole spectrum of every avenue. Um, you, you, you do your best to collect it. And some brand owners choose, they don't want to participate in the secondary earning. Um, and a lot of them do want to investigate and I, I, you know, navigate through that. And what are the, and, and this mainly come from the artist's point of view, you know, when you sell a, an artwork, how could you recur earnings? Um, and many auction house in the past have tried to set up this where the, a, a portion of the, resale value profit or turnover goes to the original artist or the estate so it, it really works for different type of licensors and different type of talents and property owners in this side from us 
Hey guys, we only have a couple of minutes left. So, uh, sorry, I, I want to circle back to to kind of wrap this up because we are running out of time. Um, you know, we have had seismic changes in the NFT world in the last six weeks, never mind the last 12 months uh, of this industry. Some of you have been in it for a number of years. Some of you have been emerging as something new, and we've seen a lot of emergence of new stuff happening. If you look at your NFT crystal ball, so to speak, what do you see happening in the marketplace of NFT over the, say, the next you know six months or the year? Um, uh, Gary, do you want to get us started here? Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to continue to grow. I mean, at first, the, the conversation is about access, which is marketplace, right? Like, what are the touch points? Where are the consumers going to uh, have access to these products? Um, and there's going to be lots and lots of different marketplaces. Some of them will be niche and very focused on certain types of genre categories or different types of, of, of offerings. And some will be more like aggregator type of offerings. Um, and just like we kind of saw like the dot-com era and, and kind of the internet and like, you know, e-commerce and all those types of things, you're going to have just more and more and more. Only and one, yo. And there's no, no really going to be one uh, player takes all, I would imagine, at least not for a while, uh, you know, until Amazon steps into the place. But I mean, yeah, yeah. So... Look, look at look at David, man. When he said when Amazon, like so to speak, the Amazon steps into the space. Look, look at that. Look at that right there. He's like, yeah, David. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I read reports out like, um, yeah, uh, mic drop. There, there's about eight hundred fifty thousand, nine hundred thousand NFT collectors. By the way, Chef Dizzy with a breakdown from yesterday. Uh, Formerly, like me, so Chef Dizzy was number one in the main Discord for a long time, and it switched back and forth, and so he did, he did some pretty solid uh, breakdowns. Hey, everybody. He's got his channel starting up, so show him some love, man. Chef, literally, that's his name, Chef Dizzy. He's in the chat, our chat right now. Give him a uh, some love here on the YouTube channel, man. Uh, he breaks things down, like, super quick, super laser-focused to the point. And I appreciate that. Uh, so go ahead and uh, after this stream, show me out there. And I do see in the next 60, 90 day as, you know, application like ours, direct to consumers become very easy to download and use. This number will double. And we have seen our users are almost doubling every month. Um, Yo, we actually have users. Well. We have a huge fast of three year worth of content coming out. So as you have more and more quality, yeah, we already products, got like a lot of years of content. The mass market, we already have licenses. Will be, you know, coming in. So there will be, and I do have to admit, you know, there's a lot of speculators. Um, a, a lot of things have been paid way over price or way over value. There will be a correction, but ultimately, if you have a great product, great experience, and you know a good roadmap, and as, as a brand owner how to capture the experience with your audience you, you're going to be in this space for a long time oh yeah and, uh, we have about a minute left you want to uh, give us your final thoughts yeah i think things are constantly changing and evolving i mean i work out oh. now on peloton and i do panels on a zoom right so i do zoom calls and i have a bicycle just kidding i, I give the guy too much of our time maybe I'll let you guys give him a hard time think, think, things are constantly changing and i think Yo. nfts are a new extension of what technology means and how brands will be able to communicate with their fans and their audiences. And I think that's a really, really powerful thing. I think today, as we look at the NFT space and as we look at marketplaces, me and my co-founder, Trevor, we talk about this all the time. It looks like it's 2010 eBay. And you know, we're here and you know, all of us are working to make it more like 2021 e-commerce uh, and to see how things can change. So I think a lot of new talent is going to come to the ecosystem now that there's all this excitement and capital coming in. Uh, a lot of it more innovation. And I think most importantly, as uh, as David touched on, there, of course, is a yes, kind of Yes, thank you. Give nuts right to David. Senpai. And, uh, Senpai. Brands are going to get involved and finally have a new way to allow uh, their uh, their fans to engage with their content. It's just not just a new way either. Um, it's the right? So it's obviously the future. Right. Hey, I'd like to thank Zach, Gary, and David for joining us today for the NFT Digital Arcade panel. We now actually have a short break um, in our summit. We'll return at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time for our third panel, which is the NFT and digital display case. But yeah, I, yeah.
I, I, I tease about the Peloton, but Peltons are actually really cool. Moderated by my colleague, Marty. I, I actually want a Peloton. That'd be dope. Brockstein, Goodbye. thank you for your time today and enjoy the rest of the summit, everyone. Bro, that was already. Yeah, we can fast forward a little bit. That's the end. Take out a premium version of display the artwork base people. So I won't get into too much of all these other guys because it's just pretty much a taffy uh champion fest. Uh um, which champion, you know, is a cool brand. Uh you know, I do like champion uh gear. You know, home gym, gym equipment like that is so gimmicky there's a new one every five years push-ups and sit-ups is all you need yeah for sure actually yeah that's all i really used to do too for a long time push-ups sit-ups and then uh the only thing i really had was a curl bar um and i got pretty shredded there for a, a minute and then you know the gym is good for like you know heavy weights and stuff but so yeah i i don't want to get too much into these guys uh i'll just obviously just skip to what dan was saying um, it is kind of cool, some stuff that they mentioned, but, um, just, yeah, the Preston had really good responses and, uh, Tyler, not so much. He's just kind of like there as the champion guy. Um, uh, but good for him man. getting, you know, good for all of them, man, for just showing up and being there, I guess, you know, it's some sort of, Danny killed it with the presentation, says Chef Dizzy. I agree, man. It's a log of partners. So Taffy. Uh, they do avatars and like you know their own digital collectibles i think it's kind of like a front end like it's kind of like a it, it just seems kind of like more of a management company for for collectibles but they also so it's kind of like a, a white label service for for brands um you know that's what kind of i mean obviously there's more stuff that they do but it just seems seems like a place where brands can go to for you know your basic nfts i don't you know they don't really have too much in their portfolio to be honest but uh at least preston had some good uh good responses so what we do is we enable so yeah pretty so it's kind of like vv-ish in a way you know lost it but we'll skip and that so their partner very is utility or buy they have pretty good partners actually uh taffy does no one loves Thank you, guys. Um, great to be here alongside um, uh, such uh, esteemed company. By the way, is y'all's app saying literally? So if you go to the Ultraman, it's still like, is it still bugged out and saying, is it not? I thought today was drop day. I guess that's tomorrow. Am I like totally wigged out? For some reason, I thought today was drop day. I'm glad I didn't do a funny video or a drop video. Back to the stream. Um, so yeah, VV is basically an app-based marketplace uh, for digital collectibles or AKA NFTs. And you know, really our mission is to bring that physical world experience that fans already know and love and bring that into a, into a digital environment. Um, so just some quick facts about the company quickly. Um, so basically we've been around for a long time. We started in this uh, digital collectible space way back in 2017. And we've created Vivi, which is an end-to-end -end digital collectible ecosystem. And one of the things that's important for us is that, you know, this is a product that is designed by collectors for collectors. So while we have a lot of the tech in the background, <clears throat> it is very much uh, user-friendly and easy to use on the front end. Uh, and as a couple of the other panelists have touched on, you know, this really is creating a new type of digital asset class for IP owners to leverage and, and fans to really enjoy. Uh, as I mentioned, we use um, our blockchain for all of our authenticity and scarcity. And really, you know, our mission is to create a sustainable digital collectible industry. You know, we'll all go. All very important points, you know. Um, he's basically saying like, we're kind of the pioneer up here. Uh, create an end -to -end, uh, ecosystem. It's collector, it's, it's a, collector platform that was created by collectors right that's very important uh it's just not you know you see all these other platforms popping up that are are software developers but they're not actual collectors so 
I think that's super important, man, for the experience. And David, you like crushed it on that end. We all kind of know we're going through a bit of an NFT bubble now. Um, but, you know, one or two years ago when we got into this, nobody really knew what an NFT was. Um, throughout Low-key uh, Sony right here with the, the Ghostbuster uh, boogly, uh, you know, logos. The peace sign, you know, uh, Ultraman, Subaraya. All, obviously, all these brands we know and love right here. The past couple of years, we've managed to sign up over a hundred different brands which we'll be rolling out uh, over the over, over the coming years. Have you heard of these brands? I don't know. Um, I just like to touch on a couple of our key team members: um, David Yu, crazy collector, basically our CEO. Uh, myself, I'm very very much into the tech side, and uh, a lot of people uh, from the licensing world in the audience may know of uh, Alfred Kahn, uh, who's in the Hall of Fame of, of licensing. <laughs> You didn't even, you just like mic drops. Yeah, now, you, you might know, you know him. For us, really, it's about, not about the technology. Yeah, he didn't mention Pokemon because like, you know, we would have all been like making videos on that. Like we already made videos on just this image alone. Like this image right here. And we want to make sure this. LaShawn McCoy got the little Marvel image and. This product is very easy. So really what we've tried to do is recreate the physical experience in the digital world. And we've achieved that by dividing the app up into a few main sections. Number one, the user has the store where they can browse all our different NFL, brands PA, baby. Um, and purchase collectibles. I've been talking about that for a while. Users we got Superman, Marvel. have their own virtual Marvel. showrooms, whether they're this Marvel. or augmented reality. They can set them up. They can view their collectibles in, in augmented reality. Um, we have a social feed. Of course, um, you know, Marty, as we touched on earlier, collecting is all about community. So uh, the feed is kind of the heart of, of Vivi. Uh, very important, man. Very important. Um, again, no collectible industry is uh, is running properly unless there's a secondary market. So again, we provide a very, very easy way for our users to buy, sell, and trade their collectibles amongst each other. Um, and then, you know, from the account, uh, a user can manage uh, all of their collection, really carry their collection in their pocket at at all times. So uh, what is a uh, VV digital collectible? So number one, it is a high quality 3D model or 2D asset. They all come out in limited edition. They can be static or animated. They can be fully interactive. In fact, we have like a drivable uh, DeLorean. They can be upgraded. We have a drivable DeLorean, guys. We need, we need to be able to drive our DeLoreans. Uh, but anyways, I, interesting you said that. I don't know if anybody really like said anything about and re-mentioning and kind of reconfirming the drivable DeLorean. ...customized, viewed in VR and AR, uh, secured with blockchain. And then for those licensors who want it, they can be interoperable NFTs, or, or, or which means they can be transferred between various marketplaces. Um, just to finish up, um, mm -hmm. uh, so Vivi launched in January 2021. Um, since then, we've secured over 250,000 users. Um, we've had some record drops. Um, we did one, which was the DeLorean time machine, which we sold 87,000 editions in three hours. It, it's no big deal. Um, really. and, and in the past couple of months that we've been open, we've sold over, um, 250, sorry, 350,000 editions. Uh, in addition, we're ranking number coming out number with three and freaking four in the most popular stats. Sorry, in, in the top grossing apps in the entertainment space. And for me, you know, this is one of the most important. So that, you know, this right here is just incredible, guys. Like, you're, you're talking about some of the most grossing apps in the in the uh, Google Play Store. And Vivi, you know, just doing light drops. And this was, like, weeks ago, uh, sitting at number three, number four, you know, a lot of number three and number four, right? It's some of the, you know, highest grossing per capita, you know, countries in the world. So that's that's really an important milestone and achievement. Apps in the entertainment space. So and for notes. me, you know, this is one of the most important things about the about the app is that we are getting massive social engagement with our augmented reality, with our virtual reality. VV Art Show. We just, there is just so much amazing content coming out, which is both great for us, great Hashtag. for the collectors, and also great for the brands getting exposure across social. Um, so, yep, thank you guys for uh, listening to that. And I'm yeah, really looking forward to this panel. I think, um, you know, the display of NFTs is really the next step have slow which is pretty exciting 
Patrick likes that. He's like, you said display? That's what I do. Uh, so yeah, it just kind of gets into the weeds a little bit here. And as a brand, ultimately we see on this page with this real get to based on what is that generally in the collectibles market. So but he's just kind of like, you know, in the physical world of talking about like NFTs, trying to like make, you know, sense of it with all that, like from a brand perspective that does physical, which is good. Uh, it's a good take up if you're a physical brand trying to get into NFTs. Uh, I think he connects with that audience, but um, I think most of us are already into NFTs, obviously. So I, don't, I think his his points, you know, kind of fell on a little bit deaf ears because we are already into it. Um, but it, it, you know, if, if you re if somebody rewatched this and they're a physical brand, I think they could connect with uh, Tyler more on that. But yeah, what were thoughts. you trying to achieve on behalf of the brand, and what did what kind of community were you hoping to create? Yeah, that's a great question, Marty. So Once again, he just kind of on the physical side. So good for, you know, if you're a physical brand trying to get into NFTs, it's a, a good take on it. Along the way. Learns of the ones that did the best um, that, or that sold out the fastest, the, the whole collection sold out. Uh, but so, yeah, just commenting on that. We'll skip past that, though. Okay, that's in ability to. We were Appreciate hearing it. about all the state of the age until the as new tech we'll talk about. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, over time, over over you know decades, as new technologies have come in, they've gone through a phase where there were five different standards out there, six different standards out there, until the industry coalesced around a single standard that was able to create a mass market. Um, it happened in video. You had the beta VHS wars. Uh, you've had it over, um, you know, various video standards along the way. Are we headed, you know, we're Appreciate hearing it. about all the different Thank you, thank you, Mr. Coyne. Thank you, Mr. Conscience. Thank you, thank you, Are thank you. Are we headed at some point toward a standardization? What, what does this, what does this look like in the future? Uh, what, what's your best guess? And what implications Chain does swaps, it have probably for the business like you see in crypto businesses NFT that you're swap. building now? Um, yeah, I, I actually believe that there will continue to be a lot of different formats in this space. But one of the major trends we're starting to see now is really interoperability, and that's the ability to transfer one asset from another uh, to another, either chain or another platform. <clears throat> For example, um, you know, you might have a, a, an item that's in, say, Nifty Gateway or an our platform that you can then send into a game, or you can send, uh, you know, into or, or into one of the games like Roblox. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you know when 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 selecting a partner in in this kind of space, you know, really interoperability like Preston, huh? should be Roblox? one of the uh, questions that you really are Hit asking um, to ensure you're not sort of isolating yourself uh, within one you know one particular chain. Mm -hmm. Very just direct to the point, short and sweet. Hey, this is where it's going. This is what what we expect, and. Uh, it's going to be cool to integrate and be interoperable, just like all the other chains are, right? The swaps, um, that protocols you're seeing. And yeah, Marty, I'll jump in because for our vision is really the reach because TVs were available on the app form is is reach, and so all smart TVs were available on the app stores or available through dongles, and this is this is the key. The other is. We want to offer tens of thousands of, of high quality images, so the quality is important. Interesting. To say, you know, example, tease. Those uh, are going to sound for, for is ultra psychic disconnect in the most $0.3 million tweet, et cetera, and, you know, and, and people and all that. Is there a disconnect between? the real business that's going on on a day-to-day -day basis on a platform like BB or any of the other platforms and the cost of entry to somebody who's interested in NFTs and no. this publicity that's out there, is that, um, 
is, is that creating a sort of psychic disconnect in the marketplace uh, when we're trying, you know, when you're, you're all trying to build a business? I think personally right now there is a bit of a disconnect. Um, you know, we, we've been in the physical collectible world for, for a very long time and the price points in the physical world now, uh, you know, especially in the sports area, are like at a, one cent a licensing and floor. What we're seeing in the digital world <laughs> are just uh, are very, very inflated. Whether it's going to stay like. So I think he's just saying yes to the other platforms, but no to ours, right? No to VV. That is, um, you know, we're going to have to see post bubble. But, you know, that's kind of one of the reasons from, from our perspective, you know, I mentioned in our presentation that, you know, we're about creating a sustainable collectible industry, you know, where our items are priced at what people would, you know, normally pay in the physical world I love for a that. physical statue. Uh, and I think that's a very important step to understand that, uh, you know, if items, if you're putting items out there for millions of dollars, uh, at the end of the day, you know, a lot of what collectors want is they want their favorite brands. And for those collectors who are in it for investment, they want that upside. And when you're paying, you know, huge amounts of money for uh, and, uh, at the very first point of sale, um, that, you know, could end up with a bit of negative sentiment if that doesn't continue to rise, which which would be very difficult. Mm. I, I would from say... From perspective... Uh, okay, sorry. No, like, crap, crap, what do we say? Okay. So from our, our perspective, we, we want to build a platform for up-and-coming artists. So really, our mission since the beginning was to make art affordable and available to everybody. And so it's clear you're seeing a lot of these inflated prices, but we... we, we Dan, solution artists actually into this space is something to be mindful of. Uh, certainly, Dan's like, uh, yeah, and um, just I can answer that question. I can, anybody I, else want to uh, attack that one, Dan? Yep, yep, and um, just to touch <laughs> on that, um, it, it also can come down to the to the blockchain provider. So uh, I think Marty's question was essentially that, you know, uh, with Ethereum being so, you know, energy ef not efficient, like it's just cons energy consumption and inefficient there. I think that's one thing to address as a serious uh, problem. Uh, you know, as, as the project, as like there's more adoption, it requires more energy, more usage, more uh, resources. So uh, Dan is just answering that question that you choose um uh, i guess the you know the most popular one really now is the is ethereum any kind of erc721 nfts um that is ultimately the has the highest cost to the environment and also highest cost in the fees right now um but there are uh, as preston touched on there are many solutions being developed right now such as layer two solutions on top of ethereum um, a lot of them are gasless. Um, they're basically 99.9% .9 environmentally friendly. And really, I think, you know, from my perspective, it's something that the, that the tech community is going to evolve over this year and we will start moving far more significantly assessment. into these more environmental, environmentally friendly chains because, you know, that's what consumers are demanding. That's what the licensors and manufacturing are demanding. And we're really already seeing that uh, that move. So I think even with Ethereum, um, you know, there's a few solutions coming out later this year that will really, you know, put this sort of environmental uh, issue to, to bed, hopefully. Okay. Um, really great response. Really good question. It's great to see brands like Champion on board with NFTs. A question for the others, what brands are all in on NFTs and what has it taken for them to get there? Sports brand partners, but feel as a bit to be out of that stuff. So, the games of dollars. You know, when, when we started, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, there really, like I said, NFT didn't, the term didn't really exist. So, we always refer to, you know, what we're doing as digital collectibles. And, uh, you know, the, the discussions were, for, were, right, were like, a little bit like different it. because our, our product itself doesn't require the user to get a wallet. They don't need to hold their private key. We hold a lot of that stuff on a custodial basis for them because, uh, you know, in order to break into this, um, you know, I, I think, um, uh, as Tyler mentioned earlier, you know, there really are two audiences. For us, especially there's collectibles, collectors, and then there's crypto users. So, 
you know, we approach these conversations in the sense that it's it's not necessarily about the tech, it's about the experience and making sure the users can really, uh, you know, make the most of this of this new space without those barriers. Okay. Um, here's a really great question. Um, what does it cost a brand to get into this? And overall, what what kind of ROI should they be imagining? What what what's the ROI on diving in here? So I'll, I'll answer from Taffy's perspective. It depends on what the goal is, right? If the goal is promotion, the way that Taco Bell did it, um, the ROI is on marketing value. If audio, they have an authentic experience. Yeah, Preston has a good point, and he uh, has a very good response right there. But I'm gonna skip it. From our perspective, <laughs> each of you I respect that you little comment. To Twenty to thirty seconds each. What are your big questions about the next year? BV music get up. We're really trying to help the the art community. Okay. Then partner with Phoebe. Dan, what are your um, questions? Really, I mean, we just uh, I don't really have any, any questions per se, but um, you know, really, I, I would just. He's like, I fully understand the what's going on here. Encourage brands to you know take a look at Vivi. We are a, a non-technical platform um, that it. really is geared towards driving uh, collectors and fans. You got to ask for the sale, baby. That's uh, that's uh. Sales 101, right? And I'm, I love that he did that. And uh, into the, the content that they want in a, in a brand new medium. Okay. Strong. Uh, Preston? Sure. Um, more of an observation. So Tyler's like, hmm, that partner was VB. <laughs> Taffy, we've been looking at blockchain technology for several years uh, for the utility of it. From, Look at uh, He's scratching his chin now, Piracy Tyler. of digital content or scarcity of, of digital collectibles. Uh, the one observation. Like, Four million in three hours sounds pretty good to me. The innovation I have is whatever just it was. the types of utility, the way that people are using NFTs today. I would love to see how that evolves uh, a year from now because. Yeah, that's a good, uh, I, that, that is a good question or good, uh, you know, what, what, what is the use case of NFTs going to look like a year from now? It's going to tie into, it already is, you're seeing NFTs tie into uh, earning tokens, crypto, and just by staking NFTs. So it's transforming definitely into something else, right? It's really not even considered an NFT. It's just like a merger. So I, I'm curious to see what they're going to call that. Um, it's definitely not going to be, I, I think there's going to be a different term. Like uh, you have layer twos. It's going to be like NF.2 or something. You know, somebody's going to come up with the name and it's going to stick and then people are just going to roll with it. We were just talking to a musician uh, yesterday, actually, that is using it for um, for creating a virtual world. Someone buys an NFT, they uh, can go in the virtual world, and they can go across to unlock different virtual worlds that unlock, you know, different music tracks that drop. So uh, to to Taffy and to us and to me personally, Dan's like, I'm just did you just steal that from us? The different <laughs> look, at, look at his eyes. He's like beyond what we can even engage. So, putting yourselves out, examine the number. So thank you all very much. It's a lot, Martin. Thank you, guys. Martin. You are uh, your golden brand. <clears throat> so that's pretty much it, guys. That was the sh that was yesterday's pretty much fast forward all through the the stream. Straight to Dan, David, uh, straight, straight to David, and uh, and Dan. Hey, uh, hook on, man. Uh, we've been pausing the video like and doing a breakdown of the whole thing. Otherwise, like if you want to see, you can just fast forward. Um, you know, you can rewatch this video. Just fast forward through commentary. Uh, maybe I'll post a video with just David and Dan later on somewhere. Uh, but that's what we're doing. The Twitter. Uh, so essentially, yesterday, uh, CZ tweeted, uh, after listening to a couple different teams presenting NFTs today, I realized I didn't Realize how big the NFT market will truly be. Not financial advice, it could be wrong. Uh, this was yesterday as like the event was going. Pretty crazy, man. Um, you know, notice like nobody can comment or reply. So, uh, you know, there's definitely going to be a little speculation. They have their own NFT marketplace launching uh, 
what is it, June? So Binance launching their own. So very interesting, man. I, I you know, PZ seems to be all about interoperability and uh, you know, providing, you know, smart chains. And so it's gonna be interesting to see how that works, man. Um and as you guys know, there's an old picture of CZ and David. Uh, I think it was in Singapore where the video or the uh, picture was taken. So uh, obviously Singapore is a big hub, a financial tech hub, fin hub, uh, a, a place. So that's where I think Binance was used to be headquartered. So, anyways, guys, that that's pretty much it for the stream today. Um, I got to get to work, guys, and I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Uh, peace, love, Vivi, guys. If you have any questions, just drop it in the chat or the comments. And I'll get back to you guys. Thanks for tuning in, man. Uh, be authentic. Be like an NFT. And we'll see you in the next one, the next stream, the next video. Thank you so much. Hit the sub button if you like content like this. I appreciate you guys. Uh, even though you guys are demanding me to pause the video. Don't pause it, man. No, I'm just playing. Anyways, I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Uh, love you guys, man. Uh, be ready for the drop tomorrow, man. Get your app ready. Open that sucker like 20, 30 minutes before the drop. Uh, do your due diligence and join the main Discord, guys. If I also have the partnership or the not partnership, but membership here. You can subscribe for as little as two dollars and like ninety nine cents. You get a special role inside my Discord, my private Discord. Cool. Uh, and yeah, guys. So appreciate you guys. I'll see you in the next one.